Welcome back to the channel. This is the Earth Science Classroom. This video is part of the AP Environmental Science Series Unit 1, looking at ecosystem ecology and looking at ecological energy flow and the energy pyramid and what happens to the energy, the sunlight radiation, once it hits the Earth's surface and is then used or received by any plant, vegetation, biomass, and how it kickstarts the ecosystem and the biomes and the flow of energy through the food chains and food webs of that particular environment. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The principal source of energy for this is the sun. The solar radiation, the solar constant that is being received by our planet, and as our planet receives it, there is a portion that is bounced or rebounded back into space. That's called albedo, and currently is about 70% of the sun's radiation is basically making its way into the Earth's system, the atmosphere, the terrestrial oceanic surfaces, the clouds, the air molecules, and about 30% is being basically reflected back into space. So the Earth is only taking 70%, and of that, about 1% to 3% of the actual energy received in the Earth's system is being converted or used by biomass, by vegetation, by the plants, by the autotrophs. Now, they're autotrophs because they are creating their own energy from the chemical reactions involving sunlight. And if it's without sunlight, they can use chemicals and different elements in the absence of sunlight, which is called chemotrophs or chemoautotrophs. But in this case, we're looking at autotrophs, which would be example of a producer, which means it produces its own energy, like grasses and any kind of vegetation and plants and trees using the chlorophyll through the leaves and the process of converting it into glucose and sugars. So that's the energy input into our environmental or ecological system and the pyramid is just a great shape to demonstrate and show the transfer and movement of the energy once that autotroph has absorbed the energy and used it to create its own energy, its own food basically. And the food, the grass, the biomass, the energy in the grass is then able to be used for other species, other fauna like various animal species that are called first consumers or herbivores. These animals only eat the autotroph and the energy is passed onto what is eaten the autotroph. For example, a caterpillar is going to eat the plants. That is a first consumer, that's a herbivore, and the energy from the autotroph, the plant that was originally used and taken by the photosynthesis is now being transferred to that animal which is called energy transfer up to a different trophic level. Trophic level is just the area or hierarchy or position of a certain species of animal which is consuming another thing, maybe another animal or in this case an autotroph. So the first consumer herbivore is the first kind of level above autotroph in this pyramid system. Then we have the second consumer, again this could be a carnivore, or an omnivore. Omnivore eats both plants and meat. Carnivore just eats meat. So carnivore would eat the caterpillar and be a second consumer. Again, the energy is going to flow up through the pyramid into what is eating the animal. And anything that consumes has to eat an animal to take its energy is called a heterotroph. And in this example, I have a third and fourth consumer, and then a predator, and an apex predator. So this also could just be in three or four different trophic levels, or three trophic levels. I just did six there, just to show that the energy is going to pass along the different levels of this food chain, which is a singular animal at each trophic level, or you might have a more complex and diverse food web, which would have multiple animals in each trophic level. And then the larger the food web, based on the biome or the ecosystem, like a rainforest versus a tundra, you'd have this more diverse, larger scaled web with more and more animals being consumed and being predator versus prey. And this pyramid will get larger with the flow of energy moving through these trophic levels. So the 10% rule is 
basically there to show that every system that's closed, the energy will not be transferred 100%. That's very unrealistic and not natural. When you transfer energy, there's going to be some loss of energy through heat, through respiration. Basically, the animal living its life and using the energy for existence, for its own biological systems, and also entropy, which is the ability for energy and systems to be or become disorderly. So the efficiency of energy transfer is around 10%. So there's a thousand kilojoules of energy in the allotroph, the first consumer, the herbivore, that caterpillar will take 10%. So it will only, only take or only consume up to 100 kilojoules of that original 1000 from the plant. And an apex predator is that animal, that species within that certain ecosystem, within that certain environment that is not being eaten, is not prey. It only is the predator. So it's the single or maybe in some cases multiple animals that are on the top of the food chain that are not being hunted, not being eaten. They are doing all the eating. So I use grizzly bear, example, a tiger, and obviously an orca, a killer whale in a marine environment. Then we have the addition of decomposers. These are basically animals and bacteria and fungi that are going to consume and recycle nutrients from dead and decaying organic matter. So they're basically there to move on all of this organic matter, these elements, these chemicals, these nutrients from the food webs, food chains, from these animals that are going to die and decompose and have this matter on the surface of the earth. And it's going to also add to the humus and the soil layers, the O and the A horizon and flow nutrients into the soil through leaching, percolation and infiltration, but also to directly input nutrients from these decomposers. And then we have detrivores. Detrivores consume and then break down organic matter again into its chemicals and nutrients. We can also add in scavengers in these animals like vultures and certain birds, which will basically prey again on these dead and decaying animals and be a source of nutrient cycling throughout the system. To understand the ecological energy pyramid and the flow of energy that comes in from solar radiation and is absorbed and utilized by all the autotrophs and then pass through the food web food chains through energy transfer up the different trophic levels through different consumers and heterotrophs and then finally at the predator and moving that energy through the 10% rule and the loss of energy through heat and respiration we can also discuss the topic of primary productivity. Basically, it's the energy that comes into the system, into the ecosystem, into the environment, into the biome, that original solar input into the biomass, into the autotrophs, that's primary productivity. And there's two types. There's GPP and there is NPP. The GPP stands for gross primary productivity. And again, using that one to 3% of the sunlight that is absorbed by the Earth's system in general, and the gross is in regards to that total amount of energy that's going into the autotrophs, into the biomass, which is then able to be used in that food web, in that food chain, in that environment for animals to consume as heterotrophs and pass on the energy. The net primary productivity, the NPP, that is the result of the total amount of energy subtracted or subtracting the respiration of the actual plants, the living part of the plants using energy to live. And the result is the net prime productivity, the amount of energy that can be transferred up through the food chain, through the food web, through the different trophic levels. So you have GPP and MPP. Now, why is this important to analyze as ecologists or scientists is the fact that this can be linked to all other topics and subjects within ecology. For example, the general ecosystems and how it functions, the systems, the animals in the system, the different niches, the different functionalities, 
the different symbiotic relationships between animals that are organized based on trophic levels, based on the ecosystems, and based on the animals in each trophic level. Looking at the different biomes, the, the combination of vegetation, the flora, and the fauna, all based on the abiotic and biotic components, including the soil, the rocks, the climate, the temperature, the precip, the wind, change in seasons, change in Milankovitch cycles, change in tectonic movement over long periods of time, changes in terms of disturbances to the environment, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, landslides, floods, and also the fact of succession, both primary and secondary succession, and the fact of or the topic of biodiversity and species richness, species evenness, all these things can be discussed and linked up and connected with that basic energy pyramid, the trophic levels, the food chains, food webs, and primary productivity. The study of energy pyramids, primary productivity, food webs, food chains, 10% rule, and how energy flows between trophic levels is important because of the human element, the human influence and impact, both on a positive side and a negative side, and understanding and appreciating if something's changed by human influences or human impact, what will be the effect, what will be the cascading connections and issues that are going to happen in that particular biome or ecosystem or food web or food chain based on the flow of energy based on the productivity of that biome or ecosystem and how we could possibly fix it how could we bring it back to its natural equilibrium or natural balance or natural systems and remove that human element altogether so it's very important to understand these topics because they form the basis for ecology this is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.